Yes, this shot looks terrible. That's because I've just got one ceiling light on above me and I've boosted the ISO in this camera just to get a decent exposure. Let's just fix that quickly so you don't click off. And this is what it looks like with that ceiling light turned off and all of these other lights turned on. Hey everyone, I'm Jason Roberts and in this video I'm going to share with you the three L's to creating great looking talking head videos for YouTube. But these tips also apply to things like interviews or even video podcasts. The first of the three L's is location. When you're setting up your shot, try not to position yourself with your back right up against a flat wall or some kind of flat shelving or something like that. The problem with this is it doesn't really give you much space behind yourself and whatever's in the background to put more interesting things in the background. It's also gonna potentially create problems if you set up a light in front of you with casting a shadow of yourself on the background or the wall behind you. This might not always be possible depending on the space that you're filming in, but if you can, try and get yourself a little bit of distance from you and whatever's behind you. As an alternative, if you can't go parallel with a wall, which doesn't always look the best anyway, you can try and position your camera so that it's shooting towards the corner of a room, and that just helps to give you a bit more depth and space behind you where those two corners meet. Position yourself in front of those corners and you get a bit more depth that way. Once you've chosen a good position, hopefully with a bit of space behind you, you want to try and add some interest into whatever's behind you and potentially around you. There's a few different ways to do that. You can use props or sets or pictures or posters, but if you don't have any of that kind of thing, you can even use lights and lighting to create a bit of background interest. Like over here, we've got this lamp and we've got a couple of tube lights in the background just to create a bit of visual interest. I'll talk about lighting later in this video. Video. So this first L of location ties in very closely with the second L and that's lens choice. When it comes to choosing a lens for your talking headshot, there's really two main things to think about. The first is the focal length or how zoomed in you are and the second is the aperture that you're going to set the lens to. Let's talk about focal length first. The focal length is how wide or how zoomed in you are. One of the major things about whichever focal length you choose is it's going to determine how much of your body you actually see in the shot. For example, you might want this kind of shot where it's kind of just a bit above waist up or you might want a really tight shot where you can just mainly see your head and maybe a bit of your shoulders. Perhaps though you don't want a really zoomed in tight shot of your face and you actually want to see a bit of the background like in this shot. In that case you'd use a wider focal length or a more zoomed out focal length. For example at the minute this focal length is 20 millimeters. If I were to zoom in of course you'd see a lot less of the background so you'd have a lot less background to worry about when it came to making that background more interesting. The second component when it comes to lens choice is which aperture do you use when you're filming? There's a couple of things that the aperture is going to affect. The main one from an aesthetic point of view is going to be how blurry the background is. For example, right now what you're looking at is a 20 millimeter lens with an aperture set to 2.5. Even though I could use a wider aperture and make the background even more blurry, for aesthetic reasons I've chosen to kind of stop down the aperture a little bit just so things aren't super blurry and we still get a bit of definition in some of that stuff in the background. This is of course personal choice you can have the background as blurry or as sharp as you want. The second thing you're going to need to think about when it comes to setting an aperture is how powerful your lights are. If you set a wider aperture that means more light can get to the sensor so your lights don't have to be as bright to properly expose yourself in the image. However if you use a narrower aperture it means less light's going to hit the sensor so you're going to have to increase the brightness or buy brighter lights. So start with a combination of the first two L's location and lens choice before moving on to the third L lighting. The reason that I'm recommending not to worry too much about the lighting until this third step is that if you're just moving the camera around and trying to find a location you don't want to have to be constantly resetting up lights and checking exposure while you're trying to find the combination of those first two L's. It's just going to save you a bit of time. When it comes to lighting the first major decision that you want to think about is what do you want the overall look and feel of the video to be like? Do you want a brighter overall look? This is called high key lighting. Or do you want a darker overall look? This is called low key lighting. When it comes to the high key lighting approach, the overall look of the video is going to be brighter, the lighting is going to be softer, there's going to be minimal use of shadow, and overall just a lower contrast image. This is going to make a more cheerful, more upbeat, less dramatic look. With low key lighting on the other hand, the overall look is darker, the shadows are harder, it's a more high contrast image, and it's going to give a moody or serious or dramatic look to the overall image. So to set up your lighting, you want to sit or stand wherever you're going to be talking to the camera and then you're going to want to start with your main light the key light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all these other lights and we're going to start with just the key light. So all the lights in this video are from Aperture which means I can control them all remotely using the Ciders Link app. So I'm going to turn off all of the lights except this key light. 
This is what it looks like with just that key light on. So once you're sitting in the position that you're going to be recording in, you've set up your lens and your location, adjust your key light so it's off to either the left or the right. You can experiment with how far around you move it, depending on the kind of look you want to go for. And you also want to position the height of this key light, at least at eye level, not below, otherwise you'll get ugly shadows being cast upwards. And you don't want it completely overhead because you'll get big shadows and kind of raccoon eyes. So try positioning your key light about 45, 50 degrees to the left or right right and about 30 degrees angled upwards. Start there and then adjust things to get the look that you want. You're also going to want to add some kind of diffusion to the key light just to make the light softer. So this could be something like a soft box or a lantern or even trying to shine the light through some kind of diffusion material or even something makeshift like a shower curtain. What this diffusion is going to do is it's going to make the light source a bit wider and a bit taller and it's going to spread it out, soften it so you're not ending up with a really harsh hot spots of light all over your face where the highlights are. Also diffusing the light and making it softer is going to try and make the skin look a little bit more pleasing. Once you've positioned the key light and you've added some diffusion you're going to want to set the brightness or the intensity of that key light so you get properly exposed part of the face that it's lighting up. In this case it's this side of the face here. So once again I'm going to use the app here. This light is an Aperture LS 300X and it's currently at 12% intensity as you can see in this app. So we can make this a lot brighter and as you can see this is going to completely blow out this side or you can make it too dark in which case it's <laughs> you're not going to be able to see me depending on what camera you're using and what features you've got you can either use the camera's meter or you can use zebras or a gray card or a white card you just want to make sure that you're not completely overexposing this side of the face so it all kind of goes white or you end up with massive circles of bright hot spots with no definition if you're not sure how to use the camera's meter or zebras or something like that and you don't have something advanced like false color then what i'd suggest is just trying different intensities uploading the video files to your video editor and just checking different exposures and finding one that looks like it's nice and not too overexposed. So once you've got the key light set up you could go and leave it like that but you can see this side of the face here is very dark. We've got kind of super low-key moody lighting going on here. If that's the look you're going for then that's cool but you might want to add a second light, a fill light, just to fill in some of this shadowed area. So I've got a light set up there and it's the opposite side of the key light and it's roughly the same kind of angle and the same kind of height. It's a little bit higher. I've got a modifier on that to soften things things up in this case it's the lantern and I'm using that just so I get a bit of ambient light spreading out throughout the room but you could use a fill light with a softbox. I'm going to go and turn on this fill light so what I can do is adjust the intensity of this fill light if it's really low intensity we're going to retain a lot of that shadow and if I increase that intensity you can see the shadows are kind of softening away you don't want it to go too bright otherwise it's going to overpower the key light we'll go for a bit of a moody look the brighter you have your fill light set, the less moody things are going to look and you're going to start to create that higher key looking image. So notice at the minute I'm kind of blending in a little bit with the background even though we've got two light sources here lighting me up there's kind of no separation between me and the background other than it being a bit darker and a bit out of focus. We can actually improve the look of this shot even more by adding a third light source. I've got one just up there behind me and above me. This is called the backlight or hair light or rim light. So we'll just go back to the app and we'll go and turn this on. Here we go. Now you can see I've got a little bit of light on my shoulders here and a little bit on my head and it's just helping to bring me forward a bit away from that background and separate me a bit. When you're setting up your backlight just check the shot in the monitor just to make sure that you can't see the edges of any stands or any crossbars of any stands. If you find your backlight is kind of spilling all over the place before I fixed it it was lighting up all of this side of this desk here and just adding a bit too much ambience and I wanted to kind of concentrate that backlight on my hair and my shoulders. One of the ways you can do that is to use barn doors which I've got set up on the Lightstorm LS60X up there and that just helps to control things a bit more. Also the good thing about the Lightstorm ls 60 60X is that it has a beam control so you can either set the light so it's wide out or narrow and spotlight that also helps to control the spill. Setting up this backlight can be tricky and also getting the right level of brightness so if I come in here this light is currently set to 1% intensity but if I increase it too much it's kind of going to overpower the shot a bit and it's going to look pretty artificial so I'm just going to set that back down 
to 1%. One little tip is that if you're filming yourself and you've got lighter colored hair, then you're probably gonna need slightly less brightness when it comes to your backlight or your hair light because it's gonna be easier to overexpose lighter colored hair than it is darker colored hair. The next thing you can do is add some lighting into the background to make things look more interesting. So you could do that using practical lights just with a simple table light or spotlight. If you're gonna use these kind of practical lights, if you can, try and get them to be dimmable, but just be careful, some dimmable lights will actually create flicker in your videos. As an alternative, and probably what I would recommend, is to buy filmmaking focus lights, even if they're the more budget end. These lights usually let you control the brightness a lot better, and they usually are not gonna flicker when you're recording video. Let's go and add some lights into the background there using the Sidus Link app. Let's start with this table lamp over here. I'm just gonna turn that on. And you can see now we've got a little bit more interest going on in the background there. Inside that table light, I've got an aperture bulb, which means I can set the brightness. And because it's an RGB light, I can actually set the color as well. So we've got that set to that kind of like purpley color. Let's go and add another light. We'll go and add this floor light. Again, it's just adding a little pop of color. We're not really using these lights at these intensities to make the background brighter. At the minute, we're staying with a kind of a low key style image. So I'm not setting the brightness of any of these lights particularly high. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on an LED strip light that I've got down there. Again, this is from Aperture. I've actually done a full video on that. I'll put a link to that in the description. So let's go and turn on that strip light. And I've got that set, kind of a purpley blue color. And we're just building up little pockets of color in the background there. The next thing I've got is this aperture tube light set to a purpley pink color. And we've got another one just there set to a yellow color. So even though we don't have anything particularly interesting to look at in the background, just adding a few lights and a bit of splash of color makes things more interesting. So at the minute we've got this low key style image, but what I'm gonna do now is transform it to a high key style, just so you can see the difference. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on a couple of these Pavo tubes because they don't have a wireless app control. Got one down here as well. And we're starting to brighten up the room a bit now and create a slightly high key looking image. What I've actually done inside the Sidus Link app here is I've actually set up a quick shot preset for a high key talking head shot. At the minute you can see it's already looking a lot brighter, but if I tap this button now, watch what happens. It's just gonna reset the lights change the colors. Now we've got an even higher key looking image. It's a lot brighter, more approachable, and a lot less dramatic. Also, what I'd probably do for a high key version of this shot is I'd move those tube lights either out of shot or turn them around so they're not directly facing camera, just so they can bounce off walls and create a softer overall feel to the lighting. I'll put a list of all of these lights that I'm using in this shot in the video description. So do you prefer this high key version of this shot or did you prefer the more moody looking low key version that we had a minute ago? Making better looking, better sounding, and better edited videos is what what this channel is all about. If that's useful to you, I'd love you to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.